Welcome to this walkthrough of the isolated and continuous footing modules, which are available in all levels of StrutCalc. This walkthrough will primarily focus on the isolated footing as a complete tutorial and will then show you the differences in the continuous footing. These modules follow the standard design process with properties on the left, the design window in the center, and design information on the bottom. Output will appear on the right-hand side of the screen, along with adequacy information on the bottom. Concrete is based on the ACI 318-19 code. You can also always check the available codes by looking under the project settings. First, set all the properties in your design, generic footing, isolated footing, soil properties, and rebar. The generic section has general properties. In the isolated footing section, you design the footing and column size. In the rebar section, you can override the automatic rebar calculations and add your specific requirements. The calculators are all easy ways to calculate and add loads and are covered in their own video. It is important to note here, the wall calculator allows adding up to three floors of loads above the footing column. Now load the design. StrutCalc supports point loads, axial loads, moments, and linked loads. These loads can be applied in either the X, Y, or Z directions. Linked loads are covered in their own video. Loads can be entered in three ways. Either from the left-hand side where the designer must calculate the load magnitudes, through calculators on the right, or by switching to Design View, which uses the old StrutCalc input methods to create live and dead loads that are locked to the Design View. You can mix and match all three of these methods. I'm going to add a point load in the Z direction, and then add a moment in the Y direction. Note that when you add a load you can set its combination type to Live, Roof Live, Dead, Wind positive, wind negative, seismic positive, seismic negative, snow, ice, rain, or earth. These can also be changed after you add a load in the lower toolbar here. There is no auto size for footings. After calculating, I use the minimum design requirements on the adequacy tab to determine if and by how much I need to increase the size of my footing. Next, I will open the print preview to view my output and customize it for future printouts as part of my project. I can select diagrams and different views here. These will be saved for later and automatically used in the print preview for the print project. Now we will open the continuous footing. Note that the general properties are the same. The difference is this is a footing with a stem wall on top of it. So, in the continuous footing section, you are designing the footing size and the stem wall size. When you add loads to the stem wall, they are uniform against the entire length of the footing and the footing can be poured to any length that is desired. Thank you for watching this walkthrough of isolated and continuous footings in StrutCalc.